Good afternoon, my name is Kieran Kennedy, Education Training Officer for West Midlands Ambulance Service NHS Trust. I'm going to take you through respiratory system assessment. For today's purposes, I've got uh, a simulated casualty who's going to assist me in the process of discussing the key relevant assessment tools of inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. The respiratory system assessment follows on from your initial approach, your primary survey and usually a thorough history take. Once you've ascertained the need to undertake a respiratory system exam, consent is really important in regards to ascertaining the patient's uh, permission to actually do a full assessment and actually ask them to derobe at the same time. So Aaron, obviously we've had a chat this morning and we've identified that you've got some form of respiratory problem. At this moment in time, what I'd like to do if possible is just to ask you if you'd be happy to remove your shirt so I can do a much more thorough assessment of your chest and your chest wall. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Great, thank you. So the four key assessment tools for the respiratory system assessment include inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. We're going to start with inspection, which means that we're going to start by looking at the base of the bed, we're going to be looking up at the patient's chest wall and we're going to be noting several aspects. For inspection we move on to palpation, which is actually physically looking at the movement of the chest wall, utilising our hands to identify elements such as symmetry and compliancy. We're then going to move on to percussion to identify the differing sounds that may occur when trauma or some other pathological underlying cause is found. And then we're going to finish with auscultation. So Aaron, all I'm going to do at this moment in time is just stand at the base of the bed. I just want you to relax your head back onto the bed and just breathe away normally for me. So whilst we're stood at the base of the bed, we're just looking for a general rate, depth, effort of breathing. We're listening for any noises. We're looking for abnormal symmetry of the chest wall. We're looking for any indications of accessory muscle use, whether that be intercostal recession, subcostal recession, substernal recession, or use of the sternocleidomastoid. Okay, Aaron, that's brilliant, thank you. Now I'm just gonna have a look much closer up at the chest wall. And if at any point you identify any scar marks, any bruising, any deformities, then you can certainly ask the patient what's actually been the history. Can I just get you to lean forward so I can check your back please Alan? And I take it you've got no history of surgery? No, no surgery. Nope. That's fine. Okay, so inspection, we found no abnormalities there. Moving on to palpation, we're going to palpate the chest wall for symmetry and we're also going to look for compliancy. Now, as we go through the assessment, we're going to do front and back, however, I'm going to just go through the process of using the front first and then we'll do the back afterwards. So Aaron, all I'm going to do now is just place my hands on the upper part of your chest. Is that okay? That's fine. And what I'm going to ask you to do for me is just take a breath in and out. And we're just looking for equal rise and fall of the hands and again and out. And normally what we would find is that if there was an abnormal pathology specifically affecting one side of the long wall, then actually the hand movement would be irregular. This time, Aaron, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come under your breast line and I'm going to place my hands like that at the base of your sternum. And this is just to see how elastic the lung tissue actually is. Is that okay? That's fine. So just come in underneath there, big breath in for me, and out. And we're looking for movement of our thumbs about two centimetres to indicate good elasticity. In this scenario, Aaron's got good movement of the rib cage, he's got good elasticity of the lungs, and so we state that he's got high compliancy. Patients who have COPD, emphysema and bronchitis would potentially have low compliancy. If it was a female patient, then we can leave the bra in situ and we can just cup under the bra line itself and ask the patient to do the exact same. It's really important to make sure that your hands come as far around out to the lateral aspects as possible because that is the part of the chest wall that actually moves the most during inspiration and expiration. Thank you for that. We're going to move on to percussion. Aaron, what I now need to do is I now need to tap your uh, chest in a variety of different places to elicit a sound. And that will just allow me to look at both sides and assimilate, see if there's any differences there that might lead to us giving a diagnosis for an underlying condition. Okay, okay. so we're going to look for um, spaces on the second intercostal space in the midclavicular line, third intercostal space, midclavicular line, fourth intercostal space, midclavicular line, and then we're going to come across to the axilla. Now to find the second intercostal space, the easy starting point for us 
they start at the very top, which is the sternal notch, come down, feel the notch where the sternum, the sternal body and the menebrium join, that's known as the angle of Louis, come across and that's the second rib. The second intercostal space will be low, that second rib. So placing a finger flat onto the skin, I'm going to use two fingers on my opposing hand, I'm going to lock two fingers and I'm going to gently tap. And we're creating a sound that will allow us to associate a cross to the injured or non-injured side. And if we had evidence of trauma or an underlying problem, then we can identify uh, what that potential sound is. We come down, we know we're going to have a rib, our third rib, approximately in that area there. So we come down to the next space. Another rib, fourth intercostal space, which is roughly nipple line on a male. And then we're just going to come into the axilla, which is halfway between the mid axilla and the mid clavicular line. So we're just going to come around here. And the same again that side for me, Alan. If you find that on the opposing side you're struggling, you can always turn your hand around and repeat as appropriate. Once we've auscultated, sorry, once we've percussed, we're then going to auscultate. And on the front, we're going to auscultate in the exact same places. We're going to do second intercostal, third intercostal, fourth intercostal, midclavicular line, and then we're going to come into the axilla. With both of the skills of uh, percussion and auscultation, it's really important to know that we don't do one side and then the opposing side. We actually compare and contrast both sides alternately. What I need you to do for me, Aaron, if you can, is just cover your mouth. Turn your head that way for me and just have a cough for me. <coughs> so this is going to clear any sort of mucus that might be sitting in the airway that might be creating some of the abnormal sounds we're going to be listening for. Okay, Alan, so what I'm going to get you to do in a moment is just take a, a nice steady breath in and out. And what I'll do is I'll obviously help you control that by saying breathe in and breathe out for okay. me. Okay? And you can just breathe in and out through your mouth for me. So we're going to find the sternal notch, angle of Louis, second rib, Second intercostal space. Okay, breathe in and breathe out. 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 Breathe in. Now when we're auscultating, we're obviously listening for certain sounds. Uh, wheezing can be unilateral on one side or bilateral on both. And when we're looking for wheezing sounds, we're looking to know whether they're on inspiration, expiration or both. Normally when a patient presents with asthma, for example, you'd normally hear an expiratory wheeze. If we have coarse crepitations, then we're looking for evidence of infection. Uh, bronchi, for example, in the bronchi, where the left and right main bronchus split, are normally in those prominent areas there. In the bases of the lungs, you might hear rails, and they can be coarse or fine. Fine rails is a bit like blowing through a milkshake at McDonald's, and you'll hear some very fine bubbling sounds, and that just normally indicates fluid, and that could be associated with uh, left ventricular failure. If we've got quite coarse sounds, then we're looking for maybe, again, signs of infection and mucus buildup in that scenario. Okay, and what I've done is I've done the front of your chest. What I'm now going to get you to is if you can just sit forward with me, and I'm going to get you to swing your legs all the way around for me. Pop your legs over there, and I'm just going to repeat the process again. So we inspected from the base of the bed, and then we came up and did the front, the back, and the sides. Now we're going to move on to palpation. So 
Again now I'm just going to place my hands on the upper part of your back and I want you to breathe in for me and out and just looking and feeling for equal symmetry. Same again. And out. I'm going to place my hands at the base of your scapula. Breathe in and out. And again just ensuring that our hands are as lateral as far as possible. Thank you. Percussion, we're now going to percuss in roughly the same places that we did on the front, second, third and fourth intercostal space. However, this time, because of the scapula sitting here, we don't want to percuss over the bone because that will create hyporesonance. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down the vertebral column and we're just going to slip into the intercostal space either side of the vertebral column. And we're going to come down the vertebral column into the uh, mid scapula region and then into the base at the very end. So, I'm going to feel, I'm just going to take it back now, come into mid scapula, and then round into the base. Once we've percussed, we're going to move on to auscultation. So again, just cover your mouth for me, Aaron, and have a cough. <coughs> and this time, because the lungs are further away on the posterior aspect, we're going to ask Aaron to breathe in a little bit deeper for us. Now, when we auscultate on the back, same places as we've done previously with percussion, roughly second, third, and fourth intercostal space, just either side of the vertebral column, mid scapula, and then into the base. Okay, I'll breathe in and then out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. That's brilliant. If you want to swing your legs back onto the bed for me, then you can pop your shirt back on for you. That concludes the respiratory system assessment.